All right. Well, welcome to a uh, restoration project that I'm gonna try to talk us through a little bit on a Series 3, 88 inch wheel space. This is a uh, 1974 Series 3 that uh, has a history originally over in England then Wisconsin, uh, I know in Honolulu, then San Diego to Colorado, and it actually got left in Colorado for over a year. And we were able to uh, rescue it from where it had been abandoned and cleared up the title, and we are finally now gonna get started on working on this truck, so we're real excited about it. <clears throat> in the process of doing this, we're gonna also breathe a little bit of new life into this. This truck, unfortunately, the individual who bought it in San Diego and then abandoned it in Colorado did not understand four-wheel drive, did not understand these trucks, drove it all the way from San Diego to Colorado in four-wheel drive, blew out uh, the rear diff and um, broke the rear half shaft on the left side entirely. So we got it back to driving. <clears throat> it's got a little bit of character in its transmission. Um, the gear shift handle is completely loose, but that we can lock that down. It's the... Um, the second gear that I'm not exactly in love with, it kicks out a second gear whenever you're going downhill, uh, it, you know, and it gets any load on it, it kicks it out. So <clears throat> what we're gonna do is, I know you can put a 300 TDI in behind a front grille panel. Uh, the radiator bulkhead is very doable, especially in a Series 3 because you don't have the headlights in the way up here as well. And we know that we essentially want to fit all of this equipment up into this truck. And you're looking at this and immediately going, what in the world's going on here? Well, we have a couple of other things going on that we want to try to preserve. So we had a Land Rover 110 from the 80s that is making some donations while we actually work on that truck on a hybrid project in a separate, separate project. And so you can see what I've done here is I put the grill in <clears throat> and I can see that I want that room. I got the slam panel in place and I can tell that I'm gonna have to weld in a new cross member. Now you're also noticing that this frame has some rust up front here. And the reason I like this truck is this is where the rust is. Um, I, can rep I can repair this, we'll take care of this problem, we'll get that new cross member in and we'll go from there. Now the question remains, and usually when you're doing a restoration modification or any kind of uh, engine swap, you need to have the plan. And I have the plan drawn up here, but that plan includes a 300 TDI and an R380 transmission. If I went with putting the engine back where it would want to be in order to accommodate this line, then that would leave me with a 12 inch drive shaft in the back. Not to mention whether or not the gear shifts would even line up. So <clears throat> one of the things that we've done here is we've said, well, I've got a perfectly good transmission right here. I've got an engine with an entirely new top end and all of its accessories right here. I've got my engine hoist. I've got everything I need. Now, <clears throat> the main thing about this, however, is the air conditioning kit. And you can see here that I've already drilled the hole through. I went ahead and just so it wouldn't have one more thing on the floor of my garage, I went ahead and installed the air conditioning. Pan oh, you can't see that at all. But I installed the air conditioning dash <clears throat> and... I have all the piping and everything neatly kind of set aside. So anyway, here we go. Uh, we're going to dive in. And my decision, as indecisive as it sounds right now, is that I am going to put the newer nose on this and make this a hybrid project. It'll look like a stage one. I think there were 50 some odd 88 inch stage ones that were made. So the only thing about this is it won't have the coilover suspension. It's an option. I have some, I have some hangers and I do have some extra coils and I do actually have some axles that I could do that with, but I think we're gonna just let it have the newer engine and the newer front end. If anybody wants to then modify it later with the newer roof and the newer windshield, they'll take themselves in the direction of the 90, or if they wanna bring it back to um, looking more like the Series 3, I am gonna do everything I can to try to fit it into that grill line, but I think we're gonna get rid of that idea pretty quickly here. Just by the overall length of this engine and that transmission, it's just not really going to be a practical feasibility. So I think what we'll do is we'll bring it all forward to allow the transfer case and the drive shafts and everything to be where they need to be. And then, of course, allow the gear shift to be where it needs to be. That's going to mean modifying the seat box. It's going to mean a lot of modification, which I didn't really want to do. 
The alternative is that I just drop the engine in and leave this transmission in play for a little while longer and deal with the transmission a little bit later. So anyway, wow, how's that for having a plan, but not? You know what? What we know we got to do is we got to go after the engine, so we're going to go after the engine. So here we go. All right, so now you heard the story of what we think we're going to do. Let's get into what we are going to do. One of the first things going to happen on any major engine modification series truck is that your battery is going to get relocated to under the seat into the box that works perfectly for the battery and was later used as the battery box in later trucks. We've got to get rid of the um, air filter tray as well. And so I've removed the battery and I've pulled it out. I want to just, as a reminder, tell you, do not turn this sideways. This is an oil bath uh, air filter. So there in the bottom here in the pan, there's actually several inches of oil. You turn this over and you're going to be cleaning up oil for the first half of your project. So clear, nicely pick it up nice and level and go set it on the bench out of the way. For the first part, what we're going to do is just basically be disconnecting hoses, draining the engine, getting everything ready to be able to have the engine free and clear to get it out of here. Um, certainly, if you don't do this very often, take pictures of the things that you think you might forget about what in the world was this, where did that go, I can't remember what this was. Take pictures of anything and everything, um, <clears throat> throttle cables, choke cables, anything at all, so that you can refer back to it. Anyways, I'm going after the air filter now and the hoses, and we're going to drain and start going after uh, the engine. Okay, so we've come this far, we've got the um, air filter out, we've got the uh, battery out, we've actually got the old bulkhead loose, and the fluid's drained, uh, um, coolant anyway, drained out of the engine. And this is part of why I, I started off with a little bit of indecision on what we we're going to do, and that is basically I knew that I had a bad Series 3 front. And, and you know, and it's been worked on before and somebody's tried to do their best, but it's just not uncommon for something that lived in Honolulu, I would have to say. But in any event, um, it, it it begs the question a lot of times of just, you know, how do you go after these things? Because I know that we weren't gonna be saving <clears throat> this, I went ahead and used a grinder to get the backs of the nuts off and made my life a lot simpler rather than fiddling with a couple of nuts over the course of, you know, 20 minutes, uh, I got all the nuts out in 20 minutes. And then of course down here, I've done the same. I've just gone ahead and just grind off the, the bolts. Um, it still leaves everything else intact, but, but just replacement bolts needed are needed anyway. So just go for it. Do not waste your time fighting those old things. Just, just go buy new ones. Um, of course, what I know I'm gonna get into with this truck in any event is this rust here and this rust here. Now, I did mention that that's really all there is in the frame. I've got some bulkhead issues that I know about that I'll be going after, and I kinda know what I'm gonna be up against when I get into these areas too. We've done a few restorations, and we have certainly seen um, you know, how much work these can be. So we're gonna get this engine in and the truck running, and then we're gonna strip this truck down to bare metal and really get a chance to see where I've got a lot of hidden um, rust in the bulkhead and things like that. And then that'll determine how we go about the repair on that, whether it be a complete bulkhead swap or just parts of the foot wells, um, or if areas where the rust is just really, really light, where we just annihilate the rust and then uh, fill it, POR15, you know, that type of thing. We'll have to wait and see. I like to do the full um, restoration, of course, but this is a truck that we're just going to kind of keep going down the road, and it's certainly... Um, one that we're going to make that decision on, the deeper we get. As a guy who restores these, I have to say, when I see rust, it sucks me in. I end up going deeper than I want to go. And so I kind of have a feeling where this is going to go. But like I say, our goal today is to get the engine out and then assess what we want to do about the transmission, <clears throat> get everything tip, nipped up and tucked out of the way, get this wing off and be able to get full access with the crane to get the engine out and then decide what we're going to do with the transmission. At that point, we'll take some measurements to decide what I've got for existing drive shafts, a couple of alternative drive shaft shafts that I've got down here, and just see what my measurements are going to tell me with what I'm doing. Okay, well, we're in about two hours now <clears throat> on this project, and we have uh, gone ahead and pulled the old uh, bulkhead for the uh, radiator and its grill off. And that's obviously not so pretty on the front, but I know it could be reskinned on the front, and the rest of it's actually in really, really good working condition. So we'll leave that off to the side. And we kind of get a chance now to see the inner workings of what we're up against here. In 
A lot of the engine conversions that you're going to do, if you're going to adjust the front end or need more room for the engine, typically a lot of times the um, front cross member uh, will go. Now that's really uh, certainly a concern if you aren't planning on doing a power steering conversion. You see here now the power steering linkage, I'm sorry, the uh, conventional steering linkage that comes up here and actually drops right down through the um, cross member. I happen to have two power steering boxes, one out of a P38 and one out of a Defender, that um, are set up and good to go for right-hand drive. And I don't have any intention of really using them. I do have one of the right-hand drive truck in our inventory, <clears throat> um, actually two of the right-hand drive trucks in our inventory. So there's a chance that we could do power steering conversions on those. But for now, um, just to give you an idea of what has to come next, is we need to go after getting the battery tray and the um, air filter uh, tray out so that's basically getting in with a grinder or sawzall and cutting these as cleanly as we can so that hopefully they could be used by somebody who might need them on another project we certainly will not so the next thing we'll do is we'll get those out and then we're not too terribly far away at that point from you know bringing the crane over and setting up the crane on top just to kind of get ready to start thinking about taking load certainly I have exhaust to disconnect and lots of linkages and certainly some other power connections <clears throat> and more to go but we're not that far off. It's not hard to imagine this engine being hoisted up, lifted out, and pulled through the front here uh, within the next uh, couple hours, just depending on the lunch break and things that we have coming up ahead of us. Um, in the process of looking at this truck, obviously this has drum brakes, 1974. There is no brake assist. The booster upgrade that you got in a Series 3, this Series 3 doesn't even have the big booster on it. Um, but my clutch, my brake fluid reservoir, everything's in this area. We're gonna leave all that alone. I think for now we're gonna leave the steering alone. We're gonna leave the heater alone. We're gonna to try to leave this wing on and we're gonna get this wing off. And that's gonna allow us a lot of ability to kind of reach in and do more work on the connection side of the 300 TDI. And then for the exhaust side, we'll make a decision or determination on how we're going to um, move for this thing or not. Um, it's just kind of a, a cascade of dominoes. When the time comes to go ahead and pull the wing, uh, it doesn't matter that I can just take these three new retrofitted bolts that I've put in here out. I've got a series of one, two, three, four, I believe it's five bolts that run down the side. I've then also got to go ahead and get this um, sill panel unbolted in two locations. So it just becomes a little bit of a chase to go after those pieces, but sometimes that chase is unavoidable. Okay, well we've come at this from the inside in order to get access to the studs on the back of the block in order to get the bell housing loose. So really the only way to get to those nuts that are on those studs is going to be to remove your floor panels and then remove your uh, tunnel trim and your tunnel and uh, removing anything else that might be obstructing that in your way. Then once you have that, you have really good access to the um, 15 millimeter nuts on the back there. I've gone ahead and left the wings in place. I don't know if I'm going to get enough lift out of this to go high to get up all the way over the um, slam panel and the uh, radiator bulkhead. But I've got a few more cranks and we'll see what I get. Um, not meaning to be lazy, just trying to save some time because it's actually keeping everything nicely together. Um, this will be I, where I call it a day today is once I get this out, we'll just start tidying up. And I think we're getting awfully close to 5 p.m. anyway. So... Um, yeah, I mean, it's just a matter of kind of up, down, up, down a few times just to kind of break the seal and then getting in with a, a, a pry and just slowly but surely starting to pry the block away from the uh, bulkhead for the, I'm sorry, for the uh, bell housing for the uh, transmission. And it's definitely after five because my wife just drove home. So anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and keep pulling this out and we'll call it a day from there.